Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Well, this is the first video I've recorded in my new shop, but it's taken a little longer than I thought. And so I wanted the first video to be fairly easy, not a lot of uh, setup, not no camera angles or anything. And I had a question from a subscriber about a git command, and I always have to review these commands when I do them, so I thought I might it's been a while, so I might as well just answer the question in a video. The git command can be a little confusing if you're not used to it, and especially if you don't use the Nexion library. And of course, my channel is all about not using the Nexion library, so I'm just going to go over this. Like I said, there won't be any camera or anything. I'm just going to use a nano and just debug in the display. This is the code that I got from the user. And it starts off with this n character. This should be fairly familiar if you've watched my videos. And it's just the three FFs that are at the end of every string that you send to the Nexion. And they're at the end of every string you get from the Nexion, or most strings you get from the Nexion. And then there's an integer called received. And then they begin the serial port or get it started. And then in the main loop, they're getting the value of n0. And that's this field right here, or this component. And then they're instantiating the data from display. I usually call it DFD just because I'm lazy. And then while the serial is available, after it's sent the get command, it waits to get a receive. Now I normally will put a little delay in here because sometimes it takes a second and what will happen is it'll skip this and then it'll go through the loop and then it'll get it the next time through which is fine and you'll see that in this video and then for the main loop he's just reading in the characters one character at a time and storing it into the data from display and then when the data from display ends with that three ffs he takes the data from display turns it into an integer stores it in the received value and then down here, he, he creates or he writes n1 to be equal to that value. And n1 is this value up here. Now I added this delay of five seconds down here just so that it can slow it all down and I can show you in the debug what's going on. So now I'm going to go over to the next and we're going to run it in debug. And as long as you're not writing to it, you can turn the debug on and you can use the same port. And in this case, we're using COM4. I'm going to load this into the Nano and then I'm going to switch over to the Nexion debug mode. And now in this display, we're not doing very much. This value has no events, or the N0 has no events, and 1 has no events. B7, all it does is increment N0 and B8 decrements N0. So at no point is the Nexion sending data to the Arduino. The only way the Arduino is getting it is through the get command and then waiting for the Nexion to reply. I'm going to run this in debug. Now if you're not familiar with this, if you want to connect it up, you go down here, hit that user MCU input. We're already on COM4, and then I'll just hit start. And then you'll see these will populate. I'm going to set this one to string so it's easier to watch. And you can see that it's sending, it's receiving, the next one is receiving get n0.val. And then it replies with the value, which is zeros. Now this is replying in hex, and we're seeing decimal up here. So I'm going to go to 20. I'm going to start it again. And you can see that it's replying with 14. Now this 71 at the beginning is an indicator to let you know that it's sending a value or a long. Because the only thing in the action is longs. There's no floats. There's no anything. And a long is made up of four bytes. And it's these four bytes, that 14 and then the zeros. The 71 tells you it's going to be a long. And then the last string of FFs all let you know that the Nexion is done sending the command. Now I'm going to change this on the Arduino and I'm going to show you what it does if you're sending a string. So I'm going to stop this and go back to see what this is called. 
and in this case it's called T4. So we're going to go back to the Arduino and in this get instead of asking for the N0 we're going to ask for T4 dot txt. Now it's going to break everything down here because we're not getting any sort of value anymore but I just want to show you that it that that 71 will change. Now you do have to stop this if you notice I didn't stop it and so I had to come back here stop this and then upload it since I'm using the same serial port for both the next gen debug and to upload the data to the Arduino you can have issues so now we'll start it again I'm going to hit stop, and you can see that we're getting the text of t4.txt, and that is the value of to be sent. So if I switch this over to a string, you can see it's p, which is 70, and remember 71 was integer, so 70 is a text, and then it's to be sent is the value that this is, and then you've got your, your fs. We'll go back to hex. I just wanted to show you that so you can see the difference between the two. And now I'm going to go back to the Arduino and I'm going to set that back. And, and you also have to change this to value because we're looking for a value and not the text. Now I want to get a better understanding of what they're seeing in this, so I'm going to add a line down. So we're going to put serial print line data from display. So we're going to print what they're trying to convert to an int. And then we're also going to print out the value of received of what that is converted into. I'm going to upload this and then we'll see what we get in the debug window. So now we're back and we'll start this again. We already have a 20 loaded in there, so we should go back to where we're seeing the 20. Uh, I should see something longer over here, so we'll wait for another pass. Okay, so here is the string that it sent, and the zero and the data from display is first, and then we have that colon in there. So what we're getting is that 71, so we're, we're trying to convert the whole thing 71, 14, and then three zeros, all the FFs, into something. And when it doesn't understand what it's doing, if you try to convert an unknown thing, in the Arduino it just turns it to zero so no matter what value we put in the to be sent it's going to be zero and then it also smashed in the n1.val equals zero and put it all in one line going out well what that does over here is since the next gen doesn't understand it so if the next gen gets a string in that it doesn't understand it's gonna it's gonna think it's some sort of crazy variable and it's not gonna understand it and so it's going to send an error message back to the Arduino. And that's what that's 1A followed by the three Fs is. So if you learn what these messages are, you can get some feedback from the next gen to maybe show you what's going wrong. What we want to do is we want to separate the four bytes from the string, turn that into a long, and then send that value back to N0. And Normally when you take a string and you convert it to an int, it's looking at like characters, hexadecimal characters, not values. So a zero in hex is not zero, or a 14 or a 20 in hex. A 20 in decimal converted to 14 in hex is not the same thing as a string of 14 or a string of 20. So we have to convert that in that value and store it as a long which is four bytes long, but you have to get each byte individually and then combine them into that long. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. And the way I do it is I do it by adding a union. And all a union is, is it takes a memory location and it, and it defines it under two different things. So it's going to take four bytes in memory, because I'm going to make it a long, which is four bytes long, and it's going to treat it if you call the term get data long, it's going to treat it as if it's a number. 
if you call get data byte array, it's going to treat it as if it's four. It's a four byte array. And then that way, when we call the one, we can access individual bytes pretty easily. But if we call the get data long, this one up here, then it will look just as if it's a long, just as if it's an integer kind of a thing. But instead of an integer, it would be a long. And the way you call it is you use this get data union and then a decimal point and then whichever one you want to actually use in that instance. So now we'll go back to after we've collected the data into data dis from display and we'll get those characters. And so I've added it in here. So after we've got our data from display and we've got all the characters, then we're going to have a variable x and we're going to take it from 0 to 3. So 0, 1, 2, and 3, which is 4 different steps. And then we're going to use that get data union, but in this case we're going to use the byte array. And we're going to store our values in 0, 1, 2, and 3 of the byte array. Now, the data from display though, we're going to skip that first byte, which is 0, and we're just going to get the 4 values. Now in this case we're only going to use the first value but I want to show you in case the value got really large you'd want to grab all four um, all four bytes of data and we don't want to include the FFs so we're just going to do the four bytes and then down here we don't want to store this we don't want to convert data from display into end we just want to make received equal to something else and in this case, this is where we've stored the data into the byte array, but now we're going to reference it as that long. So we're going to make received equal to the get data union dot get data long. We're going to run this again. We may get an error because I'm still printing that long character and then it's going to smash this down here into it, that n1.value. But you'll see now that the received should be replying back with the data that we're sending it. Okay, so now we'll start it. And we'll wait till we get that long string. And there we have it. So now in this string, we start with the 71. We still, the data from display is the same. But then after the colon, the value is now 20, which is what we want. And then we're sending n1val equal 20 but it didn't go through and that's because it's treating that as one long string and you can see we're getting an error here. So I'm going to go comment out that the line that we used just to troubleshoot and it should start to work. But you will notice it misses and that's because it's going so fast after the get to the checking the serial buffer that it, it doesn't get it till the next time around. So we'll, we'll address that also. So in here all we have to do is comment that out. But then up here, before we start this while, we're going to add a delay. And I'm just going to delay 100 milliseconds, and that should give it enough time to respond. I would do this differently. If you've watched some of my past videos, I use an asynchronous delay to check for when the serial is, is available. But, but for this example, I think this is fine because I really just wanted to go over the union and how that works. So let's upload this and see if it helps. I'll hit start and then we shouldn't see the string anymore. We should just see the get n0.val and then n1.val equals whatever value is up here. And there we go. It changed it. Now if I go plus to 30 changes it, go down to 10. And there you go, it seems to work. And now we should be able to get rid of that delay of five, of five seconds and this should be more responsive. So let's try that. And now it's much more responsive. But you can also see if I clear this, it fills it a lot faster. Same with over here. So 
I'm going to close this and go back to the Arduino just to briefly review the code. The main thing with the Arduino and the Nexion is if you're not using the library, you're getting the raw data from the Nexion. So whether you're sending something from directly from the Nexion, using the print from the Nexion, or if you're using the get man to request something, you get a long string. And what you have to do is you have to parse that string. You have to pull the values that you wanted. In this case, we wanted to skip the first character that came through. That's 70 or 71 that lets us know it's a string or an integer. And then you wanted to get the next four characters and turn that into a long, but it's coming through in raw format as a long, which is four bytes long, and you had to convert that back into a long, and that can be a little difficult. So what we did is we created this union. So we're able to take the bytes one at a time store them in the memory locations, and then access that exact same memory location as a long. If you want me to go into more detail on that, I believe I have a video and I'll put a link up about it, but if that doesn't even cover it, then put some comments in and I'll consider making a video on it. But for now, I hope this helped. This was my first video in my new shop. It's actually my garage, so it's a little bit cold, and if you hear a meow every once in a while, there's a cat running around in here. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.